So today we're just going to review and shoot information um, from the past couple of weeks. And then Wednesday, we're planning to take a test over that information. So if you would like to join me in the Google world, I have a link to a quizzes. I'm new to quizzes. I just found it yesterday. I've heard of it before, but this is the first time trying to work with it. So there should be a link in the Google world in your Google Classroom. So we'll see if you find me. Okay, so we had three commonly missed questions. This one um, showed up last hour too. This, so that's both classes. You do have a graph like this on your test Wednesday. You do have a graph like this on your test Wednesday. So you want to know what is happening during each part of this graph, right? So this is our resting potential. And this is depolarization due to influx of sodium. Repolarization due to outflux of potassium. This is the refractory period, hyperpolarization. Sodium potassium pump corrects back to the original concentration gradient. And so we're back here to our um, resting potential. So the number on the graph that represents the depolarizing phase is number two. So if you struggled with that graph, I would um, pull up a couple of those graphs and you know from the internet and take a look at them. Looks like we struggled with this one above it also. So hyperpolarization, um, let's see, a membrane becomes less negative. So if it's less negative, it's less polar. So that's a depolarization. Okay, um, here the hyperpolarization is when we've gone too far, so number four. All right, and Repolarization is going down, so number three. So it looks like, um, let me see, oops, I don't want this big screen. I got somebody in the waiting room. Um, it looks like the questions that we really struggled with as a whole all had to do with that um, action potential graph. So pull up an action potential graph during your free time and try to analyze it, okay? before Wednesday. Do you want me to go over any other questions from this activity? Thank you for the, the head movements, that's helpful. I got something in the chat box here. <clears throat> you want me to go over it again or did that message come before? So this graph here, let's just pull up a, a graph, okay? Let's pull up action, if I spell it right, action potential diagram. Let's pull one up that we can bring into bigger pictures. Okay, so this might be easier to see. Okay, so um, notice the negative 70. This is this particular cell. Not all cells have the same resting potential. Um, so resting potential right here along negative 70. <clears throat> when it reaches a stimulus of a threshold value, so it has to have at least like enough input of sodium to change it to negative 55, then a signal can be sent, okay? So you have to reach the threshold. So when sodium comes in, remember the inside becomes positive rather than negative. So it starts climbing the graph, becoming less polar. So this is your depolarizing phase. Sodium rushes in. Potassium channels open, potassium flows out, making the inside less positive again. So now it's going down the graph and usually you lose too many potassium ions. So it hyperpolarizes, goes too far. Then the sodium potassium pump resets that by kicking um, three sodium out and bringing two potassium in. So it brings it back to the original concentration gradient and a resting potential of negative 70. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so pull that up and you'll find some that are labeled, um, others that will actually tell you what's going on in the graph, 
this one only if you read their language. Um, but I'm, you'll find others that are describing what happens during each phase. So, um, so those can be helpful. Okay, any other questions from that first part? Going once, going twice. Okay, so we're gonna go over the uh, review and Wednesday's test is gonna be an on your own test, but it's gonna be in the Illuminate Ed lockdown browser, not the quiz or what do we do? Google, Google Forms, not that lockdown browser, but the um, Illuminate Ed lockdown browser. Has anybody ever used the lockdown browser for Illuminate Ed for some other class? Okay, I got a hand. I didn't see my second page but your cameras are probably off, so I wouldn't have seen your hand anyways. Um, you guys know you can raise hands too under participants and reactions. Those are fun. Okay, so I'm going to show you, I'm actually going to skip ahead in case I lose people along the way from the review. Um, so Wednesday, you're going to log on to Illuminate Ed, but I will be in a meeting. So it's going to be an on your honor kind of thing. So if I go to um, the nervous system, this will be launching any moment, 1215, it's going to launch. Um, <clears throat> the link to the test will open up, although it's not going to be available. Like you'll be able to see all this information because it's informational, but you won't be able to like click on and open the test until 915 on Wednesday. Okay, so the test 915 on Wednesday. That's about what time we would have class. Once you open it, you have a 45, wi 45 minute window to take the test, okay? So if you open it at 9.15, at 10 o'clock, your window will close. But if you opened it at 9.30, your window doesn't close until 10.15, okay? So it's 45 minutes from the time you open your test. So the window starts at 9.15. I have it open until 2.30. But knowing that you have other classes, you might wanna just stick with your regular schedule and take it during this time. Okay, here's a code you're gonna need. I would write that down before I take my test. Um, once you go into the lockdown browser, you know it doesn't let you flip back and forth between websites. So you're not gonna be able to go back to this site and find that um, login. But it will be there for you all today, tomorrow, the next day. <clears throat> okay, I am contemplating, or not contemplating, I'm expecting that when you click this link, it's not going to open for you because you need to be in a lockdown browser. We'll see if I'm wrong about that. The lockdown browser, you start before you ever log on to your computer. So that's why I say write things down ahead of time. So I'm going to open this up. So this is how, like, you know, when you first turn on your computer, it looks like this. Yeah. Okay. So it first looks like that. So basically what you saw was you don't log on to the computer, right? You go to the apps, you click Illuminate Ad Lockdown Browser, you put in your at Hazlitt email and the code that I told you to write down. So that's why you're gonna need to write it down because once you log in, you won't be able to get to it. Okay, so then you'll put in you'll put in this code right here, okay? So you'll have that written down. Any questions on how to get into the test? So if you have problems um, logging on, like I'll be in a meeting till 10.30, um, but my phone will be nearby. So I, I could field an email or something if you're, if you're struggling, okay? So, um, <clears throat> So you'll be in that lockdown browser and you have 45 minutes to take the test. Um, you have 36 qu 
questions. So you don't have a lot of extra time, right? So I know that even though I'm putting you in a lockdown browser, those of us who have more available to us, you might have a phone, you might have other computers. I'm hoping you don't use those things. I'm hoping that you're honest. Um, but I know that I can't, you know, if I'm going to give it to you on your own, I know that that, that might happen. But with 45 minutes to cover 36 questions, you don't have a lot of time to veer off of the test, right? So the more you know yourself, you're gonna be able to get through the test. Okay. So questions on any of that before I get into the review. Okay, so you have 10 matching. The matching is going to be like neuroglia descriptions. Remember that Wednesday, lesson that you did on your own. Um, so like the small phagocytic cells or the large star-like cells and also um, related to action potential or reflex arc. So, um, so that's gonna be the matching piece. 24 multiple choice questions in general. So this afternoon's gonna be um, a review time. So, under study time here, in general, this is what is on your multiple choice, okay? So questions related to the structure and function of neurons, descriptions of the neuroglia is more in the matching, function is in the multiple choice. Um, structure of a neuron, like axons, dendrites, um, direction an impulse travels, like from the dendrite through the body out the axon, sequences of a reflex arc, like from the sensory receptor to the effector and everything in between. Sequences of signal transmission referring to the direction it's moving through a single cell. Action potential referring to that graph we just looked at. Divisions of the nervous system. So we started the, the unit with that. Be able to break down the chart and then describe um, what each section is responsible for. So kind of like the concept map you guys made. Um, resting versus action potentials. So the status of the membrane, where is potassium, where is sodium during those different times? Where is the positive charge? Where's the negative charge? And then why we even need the sodium potassium pump and how it works, right? Okay, so those that in general is the content you want to be able to talk about during your study time. Okay, so that's going to cover 24 multiple choice. Two short answers are going to be revealed along the PowerPoint. The first one with the first page. So um, we need to be able to talk about the three functions of the nervous system, which we've identified as monitoring, both internally and externally. Right now, you guys are monitoring sound waves. Um, so you're gathering information, processing that information. Your brain is making sense of the sound. It's finding out the words, figuring out the words, putting it in file folders so that you can retrieve it later. Creating a response. So maybe you're typing something down. Maybe you're writing some notes. You're doing something to try to remember what Ms. Snook is saying right now, right? That's your response. So one of your short answer questions will give you a specific situation, kind of like I explained a situation right now. And you will identify how your body is gathering information how your body is integrating it and how your body is responding, okay? So basic, like it's how, how is this situation showing the three functions of the nervous system? Input, integration, output. Okay, so myelin sheets, that's these wrappers right here, like they're fatty insulating sheets. So they protect the axon both from mechanical damage because we learned neurons can't, um, replicate themselves, right? So if you have damage to a neuron, it's pretty permanent. Um, in the peripheral nervous system, like axons can grow maybe a quarter inch a year. So if they were damaged, they might be able to repair themselves, but we need um, a lot more protection um, for the axons against that kind of damage, but also speeding up neural transmission. So um, just like the outer covering of a wire, 
an electrical wire. It speeds up the signal transmission. So we know that the signals are gonna jump from node to node to node, right? So it goes faster that way. So this is where, um, these are multiple choice type questions, the functional classifications. So neurons, those cells that actually are signaling and sending information that cannot reproduce, um, they're divided into three classes based on the direction an impulse travels with respect to the central nervous system, okay? So if it's going towards the central nervous system, a sensory cell takes information toward the CNS. So they are classified as afferent neurons. Motor nerves take it out to effectors going away from the central nervous system. So they're classified as efferent neurons. And then if it's totally within the central nervous system, signals going in and out of the brain, in and out of the spinal cord, then they're called interneurons or associative neurons, inter in between neurons. So these are found in between the sensory and the motor. Okay, so this is a functional classification. Structural classification has to do with the physicality. How many, um, how many connectors, how many um, extensions are connected to the cell body, right? So here um, you have two, one going in, one going out. So that's a bipolar bi for two. Here you only have one, it then splits into two, but you only have one connected to the cell body. So that's a uni, one polar. Multipolar has several dendrites and single axon. Most of your motor cells are multipolar. Most of your sensory cells are unipolar. No, bipolar, sorry, bipolar. Um, so that's structural classification. I'll tell you, one of the most commonly missed questions has to do with a structural classification of neurons. So be sure you understand these three descriptions, okay? Um, comparing somatic and autonomic divisions. So remember, somatic is skeletal muscles, whether you're thinking about them or not, because we know reflexes we don't think about. But if it's a skeletal muscle that's moving, it's a skeletal reflex, right? So it's somatic. So anything that's uh, voluntary at some point is somatic, autonomic. You can't control your heartbeat. Some monks can. Um, you can't control your blood pressure and things like that. So those are autonomic, smooth muscles, cardiac muscle, and different glands, like releasing digestive enzymes. I've shared this PowerPoint with you if you're turning your review already. So you have these extra links. If you want a little further information, you can click on the link. Afferent, efferent, going, remember afferent is arriving, efferent is exiting. So I further divide my, um, my peripheral nervous system into coming and going. So afferent is taking information in and efferent is sending information out. Your second FRQ has to do with either the sympathetic or the parasympathetic nervous system. So you need to be able to describe five physiological effects. So physiological are like dilating the pupils, constricting blood vessels in the thorax or the stomach, sorry increasing heart rate, increasing blood pressure. Those are all um, physiological. I often get psychological type answers, like you get scared or you freak out or something like that. Like you start thinking really fast now. Um, so stick with your physiological effects. Um, fight or flight typically is speeding things up, right? It's when you're excited, when you're scared. And then parasympathetic is mostly slowing things down to normal, bringing your heart rate, blood pressure, breathing rate all back down to normal. Um, your pupils will constrict, your blood vessels in your digestive organs will dilate, um, digestive enzymes, elimination, um, defecation, all of those are going to increase. So I like this particular graphic because it's easier to read and I can compare both sides at once. Any questions so far? Okay, I am actually not going to have you draw and label a neuron, normally I do, um, but I think it would be a little bit difficult to do. So we're not doing this, but you should still be able to, um, by knowing the anatomy, you're able to answer questions about it, I think. So like the extension surrounding the, the soma or the cell body, 
are the dendrites. Um, the long extension exiting is the axon. The cell body itself is the Golgi, or I'm sorry, I read this, is the soma, the cell body, okay? So that just helps you answer questions that are generic to a, a neuron, I think. Um, so I told you one of the sequential questions was being able to identify this, the direction the impulse is traveling through a single neuron. So know that uh, they're coming in through dendrites and going out through the axon. And at the end, you have your synapse where the um, neurotransmitters are released. Number 11, I have to add to this, I realize <clears throat> number 11 was the um, reflex arc sequence. And I'm going to be able to answer that. Um, there should be five components, and I have a different slide that I, I'll use a graphic for for that. So I'm going to come back to that one. Um, the part of the reflex arc that detects the stimulus is called a receptor. You have photoreceptors, chemoreceptors, gastroreceptors. Um, functions of the, of the neuroglia are going to show up under multiple choice. Micro, small, right? This is your phagocytic cells. They engulf and eat dead cells, debris, foreign objects. So if you had damage to brain tissue, it's going to be the, the microglia that get rid of that damaged tissue. Um, astrocytes are your largest. Astro, like the stars, are star-shaped. This is a blood vessel. This is a neuron. It's connecting the neuron to its blood supply. So it's able to clean the blood supply of toxins, perhaps, before they enter the blood. So you refer to this, I'm sorry, before they enter the neuron. So you would refer to this as the blood-brain barrier. Epidemo, like your, your, like your epidermis, um, is the outer layer and it surrounds the skull. They have cilia that help move cerebral spinal fluid. <clears throat> Schwann cells we looked at earlier surrounding um, the axon in the PNS only, peripheral nervous system. And oligodendrocytes, that's this guy here, surrounding the axons in the CNS only. Satellite cells surround, I don't have a picture of a satellite cell. Satellite cells surround the soma of a cell body in the peripheral nervous system. So this protects that very important component. So the two neuroglia that are found in the PNS are the two that start with an S satellite and Schwann. Okay. Saltatory to jump. So in this signal, the impulse you can see is jumping from node to node and it gets down that line very quickly. The same signal being sent non-stop, consistent, only travels about that far in the same amount of time. So um, saltatory conduction is much faster due to that jumping action of the depolarization. <clears throat> the chemical signals are neurotransmitters. They're released from a presynaptic cell into a synapse, and they bind with receptors on the postsynaptic cell. The postsynaptic cell does not necessarily have receptors for every single neurotransmitter. So if it has receptors for acetylcholine, Glutamate may not bind to it and therefore may not cause an action potential, right? So the postsynaptic cell will determine the effect of that neurotransmitter depending on whether or not it has a receptor, okay? And the last one is the reflex. So here's my reflex arc. You have a, re so number 11, you have a receptor, a sensory receptor <clears throat> that's going to pick up the information, send the signal through the sensory neuron, to the associative neuron, to the motor neuron, to the effector. So you need to be able to put those in the proper order. So you'll have questions about the reflex, a couple of questions, one in the matching, simply identifying that it's the simplest response to a stimuli, um, and another one in a multiple choice question where you're classifying a um, reflex as somatic, skeletal, or autonomic. Um, muscle gland or smooth muscle gland or organ. Um, the reflex is predetermined 
um, pathway. So like there's always gonna be the same response if you hit your patella, right? You're going to kick your leg and bring it back. Includes a minimum of two um, neurons as we saw with the patella reflex. Um, the quad had two, but the um, hamstring had three. So you have two or three. <clears throat> so that's the general rundown of all of those questions and maybe just a review of what we talked about because um, it's been a week since we thought about anatomy. What questions do you have for me? I was going to create something for you guys to do, like, I don't know, a notebook or something, um, but I felt like anything I did was just trying to come up with something to do to fill your time, um, to give you accountability, and it just seemed like busy work more than it seemed like it was entirely useful. So I thought this hour might be better spent you studying what you need to study. Some of you may owe me some former work, which you know I won't accept after test day, so maybe get that in. Um, I put C, uh, nervous system study time Monday flex. I put a number of sites in here that you can do some practice quizzing on. Um, maybe that would be good use of your time. Um, we put in extra practice, so that same quiz is that we did earlier today. Um, that same quiz is, is right here. So if you got some wrong the first time around, maybe you wanna try it again and see if um, you have better luck the second time. Okay, so what questions do you have for me before I turn you loose? 